today we're talking to Mercer's Chief Investment Officer, Philip Houghton-Brown. Hi, Philip. Hi. How have the financial markets been performing? This crisis is what we'd call a black swan event, a huge shock which is really unprecedented in modern times. It's a human health tragedy which needs a big part of the economy to just stop working to try and get it under control. So as a result, we've seen some incredible record-breaking moves in financial markets since the crisis started. Firstly, on the way down, and then more recently, part of the way back up again. Over the past few weeks, share markets, which are always looking ahead, have become a bit more optimistic, and movements in share prices have settled down a bit as infection curves have flattened and investors have refocused on the easing up of restrictions. How does this compare to previous market shocks and other periods of increased volatility? This shock is different from many others because it's disrupted three things all at the same time. Firstly, the supply of goods and services because factories and shops and restaurants have been closed. Secondly, the demand for goods and services as people have had to stay home maybe have reduced incomes or just want to save more as a precaution. And thirdly, the impact on financial markets, which was made worse by the collapse in oil prices. Now, shocks usually impact one or two of these things, but not all three at the same time, and certainly not as abruptly. What have governments around the world done to help their economies? So both governments and central banks have acted quickly to try and counter the impacts of the shock and provide a bridge uh, through to the eventual recovery. And they've done it in a way more quickly than the financial crisis a decade ago. Governments around the world are supporting businesses, jobs and incomes with a range of packages, including wage subsidies and loans. Central banks, including the Reserve Bank, have cut interest rates and are buying huge quantities of bonds issued by governments and other borrowers. This will help keep interest rates low and allow governments and businesses to borrow more. Now, all of this extra debt will, however, present challenges down the road because eventually it has to be repaid. But for now, it's absolutely necessary to support the economy. And what can we expect next in the short, medium and the long term? So we really don't know yet how long it's going to take to get back to normality. And some things just won't go back to the way they were before. Unemployment is unfortunately going to rise sharply in the industries that are most affected, like travel and tourism and hospitality. It's encouraging that we're starting to ease up on lockdown restrictions now as are some other countries. And it'll mean that a lot more businesses will be able to return to work, even if only partly at the stage. And there'll be more freedom to spend money as well. But the reality is, is that it's gonna take some time for confidence and economic activity to pick up. Even as restrictions are lifted, behavior will likely remain cautious for a while. And as a result, the markets may remain more unsettled than usual until the picture becomes clearer. On the positive side, some good things will come out of this, such as a wave of innovation and increased productivity through the, uh, the increased use of technology, as well as a, a greater focus on business resilience and sustainability. We've seen typically defensive assets such as infrastructure and property being significantly impacted by the measures taken by many governments and businesses to contain the spread of the virus. Why is that? And what's the outlook? That's right. Uh, it's because the purpose of many of those assets uh, is to bring people together or to enable them to travel. And this have, has, of course, come to a halt. Shopping centres and offices and airports and toll roads uh, have all seen a dramatic reduction in activity. Other areas, though, have on the other hand fared much better. Uh, for example, distribution warehouses, which are needed for online shopping, mobile towers and data centres, given the increased data traffic needed for video conferencing, uh, streaming movies and gaming. 
course, these trends were already in place, but they have been dramatically accelerated in this environment. Growth options have generally noticed the biggest drop in returns. What impact does making an investment switch during big movements and returns have on the possible long-term savings? Yes, and we recognise how concerned investors may be when in markets go down, particularly as they've done recently. What action you should take depends on your retirement plans, when you intend to withdraw your money, and which investment fund you're in. It's important to know that moving funds or withdrawing money when markets fall can cement any losses you might have experienced. It would be a bit like selling your house after property values have fallen. For many people, not making a change is often the best thing to do. Furthermore, continuing to save regularly and investing while fund values decline typically pays off over the longer term. Because you're buying assets at a lower cost and the expectation is that their value will increase over time. Looking back over the past hundred years or so, there have been many crises and challenges confronting investors, but well diversified portfolios have still generated positive returns. It's important for long-term investors to keep that in mind. What impact is plummeting oil prices likely to have on investments and the drive to do more environmentally friendly investments? As yet another reminder of the extraordinary time we're in right now, oil prices have plunged and even became negative briefly. There's simply too much oil being extracted in a world which just doesn't need it at the moment and is running out of places to store it. Now normally a lower oil price helps because it leaves us with more money to spend on other things. But at the moment, not so much because so many people aren't commuting or traveling anyway, but eventually it will help. Now there are two sides to the sustainability question. On the negative side, a low oil price unfortunately tends to discourage investment in green energies. And also given the current health concerns, people may shy away from using public transport and rev revert back to using cars. But longer term, there will be positive environmental effects, including a drop in oil production and exploration, and more people continuing to work from home. Having seen clearer skies in cities across the world, I think there'll be a renewed desire to keep it that way. I'm optimistic that all these people and families out walking and running and cycling instead of driving will want to keep that going. More broadly, there will be a lot more interest in differentiating companies that build resilience across their entire value chain than, than those that don't. And as a result, you know, we believe the value of responsible investing is becoming increasingly clear and important. Mm -hmm.